Hello, my name is Rayana Casillas, and today I will be talking about how the Chicano movement affected literature. I'll be connecting the novel Under the Feet of Jesus to the Chicano movement using the theme of change. The definition of change is to alter, vary, or modify something, but this can be measured on any scale no matter how big or small. Change is the constant thing that everyone will experience in their life, and it's a big topic that's come up during this quarantine. Millions of people are calling for change for many different things, but people have always been fighting for these changes. The Chicano movement can arguably date back to the 1500s, but I'll be talking about the Chicano movement from the 1900s to now. The word Chicano was a derogatory term used to label Mexican Americans, but during the 60s, many Mexican Americans began to label themselves this with pride. There are many different Chicano movements, but the one I'll be focusing on is the farm workers movement. The farm workers movement is one of the most iconic Chicano movements, and the movement in itself was for the exact people who are represented in the novel Under the Feet of Jesus. In 1965, grape pickers were reported to make 90 cents per hour and 10 cents more for every basket that they picked. State laws that were supposed to protect working standards were completely ignored by farm owners, and it was even reported that at one farm, the boss was forcing farm workers to drink from the same cup, and then at another farm, they had to pay a quarter to drink a cup of water. They weren't provided with toilets, and their temporary housing was segregated by race. Not only were they segregated, but they had to pay $2 more daily to stay in unheated housing with no plumbing or cooking facilities. Labor contractors had favorite workers, they selected their friends first and accepted bribes from the workers, and child labor was extremely common and many people were injured while working at farms and or they died from the injuries at the farm. The average life expectancy of a farm worker was 49 years. In 1959, the AWOC or Agricultural Workers Organizing Committee was founded. It was an outgrowth of a previously founded organization called the Agricultural Workers Association, which was founded by Dolores Huerta, aka one of the most prominent leaders of the farm workers movement. This brings us to the founding of the NFWA, or the National Farm Workers Association, which was started by a Chicano man named Cesar Chavez in 1962. He came from a family of extremely poor farm workers, and after joining the CSO, or Community Service Organization, he rose his way to the top and became the national director. But the CSO refused to concentrate their efforts on organizing farm workers, so Chavez left to do it himself. The CSO is where Chavez also met Dolores Fuerta, who we talked about previously. On September 16th, the AWOC approached Chavez and asked the NFWA to join them in a strike. In just four days, over 30 farms were left without thousands of workers. The farm owners tried to calm the strike by raising the wages to $1.25 an hour, but they were shocked to find the strikers wanted more. Chavez then called the public to boycott buying grapes without a union label. Union volunteers established boycott centers and encouraged people to join their boycott. At the time of these boycotts, the civil rights movement had people educated on racism and discrimination, so once they heard about the mistreatment of many farm workers, millions of customers stopped buying table grapes. In a fit of rage over the boycotts, the Shenley and DiGiorgio company sprayed its striking workers with agricultural poisons. To protest this, Cesar Chavez led a 340-mile walk on March 17, 1966. Hundreds of people joined him, and once they arrived at the Capitol building, 10,000 people were pressuring DiGiorgio to sign an agreement with the NFWA. The International Brotherhood of Teamsters offered itself to DiGiorgio as a conservative alternative to the NFWA, and of course they accepted. Chavez was infuriated by the betrayal, and despite this, the strikes dragged on for dozens of grape farms in the Delano area. The NFWA and AWOC officially merged the summer before the DiGiorgio election. They became the UFWOC, or the United Farm Workers Committee. Many grape growers began to accept union contracts because of the strikes, and the UFW became one of the most represented unions in California. Under the Feet of Jesus directly represents migrant workers from the farm workers movement. Elena Maria Viramontes is one of the many Chicana writers who writes about the Chicana movement. 
At the 12th annual Latino Book and Family Festival, she spoke about her work relating to Chicanos, and in this quote, she's quoting what a man said to her when she was becoming a writer. He told me, you know, the trouble with your work, Elena, is that you're writing about Chicanos. You should be writing about people. She later goes on to make the point that ethnic writers are forced to define what universal writing is, and the only reason she was ever told this was because the advisor who told her couldn't understand her ethnic characters, so therefore they just didn't exist to him. This is what inspires her to become a good writer and write the novel Under the Feet of Jesus. Under the Feet of Jesus is a novel about Chicano migrant workers, or piscadores, who are forced to make a living harvesting grapes and other fruits in California. Estrella, Petra, and Perfecto have arrived at a new farm, and at this farm, they meet two other teenage boys named Alejo and Gumisindo, who offer them peaches that they've stolen. Estrella is Petra's daughter, and Perfecto is Petra's new boyfriend. Alejo and Gumisindo are cousins. During the novel, we see their struggles working on a farm, and we watch them struggle to put food on the table, but one of the biggest plots in the entire novel is Alejo's worsening sickness. While Le Alejo is picking grapes, he gets sprayed with pesticide. The biplane circled, banking steeply over the trees, and then released the shower of white pesticide. From the pesticide, he grows extremely sick and begins vomiting for days afterwards. And for the rest of the novel, he grows sicker and sicker until he's almost bedridden. This is a direct reference to the same things that happen to migrant workers in the grape farms in California. Vira Montes does an amazing job of showing the pain migrant workers experience, and this reference is further continued later on in the novel after Alejo gets worse. Florente of the islands informed Gumisindo that his cousin Alejo had a sickness they called Daño of the Fields. Daño of the Fields is a term that suggests that Alejo is not only sick from pesticides, but sick from labor exploitation. One of the biggest issues with farms during the Chicano farm workers movement was the exploitation of children, and we see this within Alejo as he is forced to steal crops to eat and punished with pesticide sprays. This further shows the connection of Under the Feet of Jesus to the farm workers movement and shows how Vera Montes included the farm workers movement in the novel. Another way we see Chicano culture in the novel is through a statue that Petra names Jesucristo. This is a statue of Jesus, and underneath this statue, Petro keeps legal documents, including Estrella's American birth certificate. When Estrella is nervous about being caught by La Migra or the immigration police, Petro tells her, If they stop you, if they try to pull you into the green vans, you tell them the birth certificates are under the feet of Jesus. Just tell them. Despite being Chicana and owning an American birth certificate, Estrella still fears and is pursued by immigration police on the border. This shows the reader more of the fear and discrimination migrant workers experienced. It also shows us more insight to their culture and religious values. Jesucristo is a symbol of Petra's hope to prove that Estrella is an American citizen and Petra's faith in God and religion to keep her safe. At the end of the novel, we see this faith crumble as Petra leans against the statue to alleviate some of the pain from her pregnancy. The head of Jesucristo broke from his neck, and when his eyes stared up at her like pools of dark, ominous water, she felt a wave of anger swelling against her chest. Jesucristo's head breaking off at the end of the novel represents their lost faith. It's the last way the book demonstrates that they truly have nothing except for each other, and even towards the end of the novel, they're losing each other. Alejo is left behind in the hospital to possibly die, Perfecto wishes to leave and is too nervous to start a new family at such an old age, and Estrella and Petra are too ill to work any longer. The system has failed them and exploited them as much as they could possibly be exploited. They work tirelessly yet receive nothing in return. Working on the farm has completely drained them mentally and physically. We can see this within migrant workers during the farm workers movement. I chose to focus on Under the Feet of Jesus and the Chicana movement because I'm a Chicana myself. I grew up with my tata, Martin Moreno, who has done multiple works of art in honor of Cesar Chavez. At the Cesar Chavez Commemorative Park, he worked with two other artists to create a plaza in honor of Chavez. This is one of the four bronze plaques he created where you could see migrant workers out in the fields. Both of my parents also recently became farm workers themselves, so <laughs> I'm almost as Chicana as you can get. So for my 3QP poem, I talked about my experience of seeing change from when I was too young to truly understand it to now, during this past quarantine. 
I reflected on the history I've learned and the history I've been a part of and from this reflection I thought about how much protesting and work has been done towards ending discrimination yet the same problems still persist today but at the end of the day I feel that change is change and without that we'd be nowhere. A large majority of this poem is inspired by two things, the chant Si Se Puede and a video I watched last summer during the Black Lives Matter protests that really shocked me. The video shows a woman named Kimberly Jones, who compares economics in America to Monopoly, except whenever white people feel like it, they can burn down black people's games. The way she summarized her feelings about the riots was so well said and I completely agreed with her feelings of anger. I wish I could show the full video, but it's six minutes long, so it's something I definitely recommend watching later. The other thing that inspired my poem was the chant Si Se Puede, which means Yes We Can in Spanish. It was popularized during the farm workers movement by Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta. It inspired Obama to use Yes We Can as his 2008 slogan and it was also used during the SB 1070 protests here in Arizona, which were the first protests I ever witnessed and remember from when I was younger. I highlighted parts of my poem to expand on concrete details and imagery I included. I'll be including the link in the chat. I wanted the poem to walk you through the thought process of understanding that progress is needed no matter how small and walk you through some of the historical moments I've experienced in my lifetime that have directly affected my family, my friends, and I. So without further ado, here's my poem titled Baby Steps. The cycles and cycles spent waiting for growth, twisting and turning yet nothing to show. Time is relative, a common saying, there's no honor in winning this game we're playing. The scorching pavement under the heat of the sun, chanting si se puede till our lungs are none. 143 moons, people left forever nothing, no justice, no peace, it's the same, yet still something. Baby steps, so delicate, so fragile, with no significant imprint made. Baby steps, assumed to be lost, but they lie deep down inside. Baby steps, wounds healing from their many genocides. Thoughts racing, questioning the true meaning. Is there an end to this game, or will our hearts just keep bleeding? Taking the restless wind inside our lungs and passing it on, raising voices, we are prepared for the situation we've come upon. The heat in the air, hot to touch from our frustrations. We, the people, are allowed to choose our administration. Thank you.